An evidence-based approach to assessing and treating a patient with relapse and remitting multiple sclerosis for physiotherapy students. Learning outcomes. By the end of this video, you will be aware of the common presenting symptoms of a patient with MS or OR, have the necessary skills to carry out a comprehensive subjective assessment, have an awareness of skills of the subjective assessment, such as active listening skills, asking open-ended questions, creating a natural flow, and showing compassion. Know what to look for in an objective assessment? Recall common evidence-based outcome measures. Be aware of how to collaborate with your patient to create a treatment plan. Be aware of several available treatment options. Anna, a 42-year-old, was diagnosed 10 years ago with MS. Her primary complaints were leg weakness and difficulty walking long distances due to fatigue and weakness. For years, Anna has experienced episodes of worsening symptoms causing unsteady gait, poor balance and lower extremity weakness. This has led her to use a stick while walking. Before we get stuck into our subjective assessment, an important reminder, the physiotherapist Megan will be utilising a biopsychosocial approach throughout the assessment. This approach ensures that not only the biological symptoms of Anna's MS are assessed, but also the psychological and social aspects contributing to her presentation. Many of the silent or hidden symptoms of MS, such as fatigue, pain, depression, cognitive and social problems, can be as debilitating and disabling as the more obvious functional problems. Therefore, it is important to ensure these are not overlooked. Furthermore, assessment should be carried out at a time which suits the patient best. Morning time is usually recommended as fatigue usually worsens as the day progresses. Don't forget to ensure the assessment room is at an appropriate temperature as patients with MS do not tolerate heat well. Throughout this assessment, jot down what you think may be some factors contributing to Anna's problems and which are modifiable, non-modifiable under the headings biological, psychological and social. Initial observation. The objective assessment begins as soon as you lay eyes on the patient. As Anna enters, we can clearly see gait abnormalities. Anna walks slowly and steadily and appears to fatigue easily. Other signs you may encounter include reduced speed and step length, reduced range of motion of the leg joints, increased double limb support and reduced stability. It is also important to look at the patient's footwear as sterility footwear can be critical in the prevention of falls. Once the subjective begins, pay attention to Anna's voice. You may hear staccato due to cerebellar involvement. Hi Anna, my name is Gemma, I'm your physiotherapist. Nice to meet you. You too. Would you like to take a seat? Thank you. So, Anna, I'd like you to just tell me maybe a little bit about what brought you here today. By posing open-ended questions like this, you are giving the patient the opportunity to explain what the biggest issues are for them, which will guide you in patient-centred assessment and treatment. Well, Megan, I've known as my walking has gotten a lot worse recently. Um, my balance is bad as well, and I don't really feel steady on my feet. I've known as this, like I've had good days and bad days for the past couple of months, but this is different. Anytime I'm walking out, I'm afraid I'll fall. Gosh, that's not easy for you. Tell me, do you always use your stick when you're walking? To be honest, I only use it the odd time. Um, I'm too embarrassed to go out in public with it. Like, I'm 42 and it's mortifying having to go outside. I'm afraid of what people are going to think of me. Um, I really don't want to go outside if I have to use a stick. Okay, that must be tough. And when you do use your stick, do you find it keeps you more steady? The language used is important when assessing Anna. Notice how the physio uses simple terms such as steady to question Anna on her balance, speaking slowly and clearly. As Anna presents with minor cognitive deficits, including poor concentration, it is vital to ensure that the physio communicates well with her and ensures her understanding throughout the assessment. I do, yeah, to be honest, I do feel steadier when I use it, but it's just not worth, not worth the embarrassment. Sometimes when I'm feeling really, really tired, my legs just feel so heavy and I can't use them. I do have a role later as well, actually, that I use at home, but not in a million years would I leave the house with that. Okay. And Anna, you mentioned you're afraid of falling. Have you had any falls recently? I have. I've had a couple of falls in the past few months, but I don't actually really remember all the details about them. I'm, I do think about falling all the time and I'm afraid at home if I fall that there'll be nobody there to pick me up and I'll be left there for days. And do you have an alarm that you could press if you fell? Here the physio provide the emotional support to Anna as she has mentioned being terrified, afraid and mortified throughout the subjective assessment. This is clearly a major restricting factor for Anna and the physio addresses these emotions in order to support and reassure her regarding her fear of falling. I was going to get one, you know, a lady came to my house selling them but she said she'd get back to me and I never got one because she never did. Okay, well maybe I could put you in touch with a, you know, an occupational therapist who could sort one of those out for you. That'd be great, thank you. Brilliant. Yeah, thanks. And Anna, is, have you got anyone at home or is there anyone who calls to you often? I have a sister who lives up the country, but she's a family of her own and a job and a husband and too many things to be worrying about me. 
Um, I do have a friend, my neighbour Deirdre comes every day, she does the shopping for me, she's great. Okay. That's great having a friend like Deirdre. Yeah. And Anna, do you have any home help? Um, there is, I do, a lady comes to me every morning to get me out of bed and she comes in the evening then and I get ready for bed. Deirdre as well um, does the hoovering around the house, mm. I do, she's super. Yeah, yeah, that's great to have someone like Deirdre around. And have you had any modifications done in your house? I moved my bedroom downstairs recently enough um, because I can't, my legs, when it comes to the evening, my legs are so heavy I can't even get up the stairs. The physio is actively listening throughout the entire subjective assessment, which is an important aspect of patient-centred care. While the physio is guiding the conversation, she's letting Anna speak and uses eye contact and effective body language to portray her understanding. Um, but my bathroom is downstairs anyway. The so home health lady was saying something about this grant that I could make proper changes, but just the thought of having to fill out all the paperwork sounds exhausting. Well, we could put you in touch with a social worker who could sort some of the paperwork out for you. That would be great. Yeah, thank you. Multidisciplinary team working has been shown to be the most effective way of ensuring a truly holistic care for patients so that all patients' needs are addressed and treated. Social worker, assist Anna with paperwork for house renovations to make her home life easier. Occupational therapist, can provide adaptive equipment and devices for Anna to make ADLs easier. Be aware of your scope of practice. We must ensure that we work within our boundaries of our expertise and know when we must make a referral for our patients to other members of the MDT to ensure holistic care is achieved. And Anna, have you got any interests or hobbies or things you do in your spare time? I used to play golf, but I gave it up now, I suppose a year or two ago, because I'm too tired. But back in the day, I was great. Uh, my father used to play it, and I even won like a captain's prize competition before. Oh wow, fair play. <laughs> That's impressive. Note how the physio is engaging in casual conversation in order to build a rapport with Anna. <laughs> yeah. I do miss it. I'd love to get back to that now. Yeah. Um, well, that's certainly something we can work towards. And Anna, is there anything specific you'd like to get out of our work together? Um, my main goal really would be to not be afraid to leave the house. Um, I want to be able to go around um, and not be afraid of falling. Okay. Well, that's all the questions that I have for you at the minute. If it's okay with you, I might just do a few quick tests to check your balance and strength. No bother, yeah. Okay, great. Anna's problem list includes increase in symptoms, reduced muscle strength, poor balance, increased falls and fear of falling, fatigue, social isolation and difficulty with ADLs. This is all based on the ICF framework. Now it's time to put your thinking cap on. Pause the video and make a list of things you would like to objectively assess and note any outcome measures you could use. The physiotherapist is now assessing active range of motion and testing isometric strength by applying resistance against movements for lower limb movements. The Oxford grading scale for muscle strength will be used as an objective measure. It is important to assess active range of motion as individuals with MS can have reduced range of motion which can lead to contractures if untreated. Strength is another important component as the primary symptom of MS that Anna is experiencing are leg, leg weakness and fatigue. The physio is assessing passive range of motion also to check for any stiffness or spasticity caused by hypertonia. Can you recall how we would check for spasticity? Yes, that's correct. Spasticity is velocity dependent. Therefore, when testing, we must move a joint to range of motion at speed. The modified Ashworth scale is useful to grade the severity of spasticity so we can track how spasticity changes over time. Clonus is a reflex that is spasmodic alternation of muscular contraction and relaxation, usually seen in the calf muscle reaction when the foot is sharply bent upwards towards the thigh and held in mid-position. A positive result indicates an upper motor neuron lesion. The physio is now testing reflexes. What kind of reflexes would you expect to see in Anna given that she is hypertonia? Exactly, brisk reflexes. The Binsky reflex occurs after the sole of the foot has been firmly stroked. The big toe then moves upwards or towards the top surface of the foot. The other toe fans out. The physio is now testing dermatones. As MS causes damage to nerves, sensory disturbances are common. These include sensory loss, paresthesia and pain, which can affect any part of the body and can come and go or come and stay. Jot down the other sensations you would test as you watch the video. As Anna displays an unsteady gait, we might hypothesize that there is cerebellar involvement. To con confirm this, the physio will carry out specific tests. Nystagmus is a vision condition in which the eye makes repetitive, uncontrolled movements. Acquired nystagmus, which occurs later in life, can be the symptom of another condition, such as stroke, multiple sclerosis, or trauma. 
dysdiadocokinesia is testing for the inability to perform rapid alternating movements. To test for proprioception, Anna is tested on her joint position sense in the finger-to-nose test. As you can see here, Anna shows signs of an intention tremor and a path pointing. The heel-shin test is used to measure coordination of the lower extremity. The heel-toe-tap test is testing for the inability to perform rapid alternating movements of the lower extremity. The Romberg test. Anna stands with her two feet together, with her arms either next to the body or crossed in the front. The physio asks Anna to first stand quietly with eyes open, and subsequently with eyes closed. Anna tries to maintain her balance. For safety, it is essential that the physio stands close to the patient to prevent potential injury if the patient were to fall. The Romberg test is scored by counting the seconds Anna is able to stand with eyes closed. Take a look at the findings from the objective examination. Don't forget to pause the video to take notes. Now we'll have a look at creating a plan so you can get the most out of our work together. Um, how does that sound to you? That sounds great. I'd love to be able to improve my walking and maybe not be so tired all the time. Well, that's a great start. Let's write down some of those goals. So, you said you would like to improve your walking. What do you think you could do to achieve this? Well, maybe, I think maybe if my legs weren't so weak, maybe I could strengthen them up a bit. Or maybe I'd be able to walk better, better then. Or maybe some balance. Yeah. Well, there, these are certainly things we can work on. We could perhaps try some strengthening and balance exercises. Consistent physical activity, including resistance exercises, to increase Anna's strength and aerobic exercise to improve endurance. Anna will gradually progress through these exercises safely and comfortably. Exercises including flexibility, range of motion, balance, coordination, and functional activities significantly improve balance, functional status, spasticity, quality of life, and fatigue in or or MS patients. Effective balance exercise involve core stability, dual tasking, and activities altering sensory conditions. That would be perfect. I do get really tired very quickly though. Another goal we could could be to reduce your tiredness maybe, definitely. Yeah, we could practice some relaxation and pacing techniques. And exercise is also shown to improve tiredness. Um, another thing we could try out is cognitive behavioural therapy, or CBT for short. Have you ever heard of this? CBT is a form of psychological therapy. It is commonly used in the treatment of MS to manage symptoms of depression, anxiety and fatigue. Benefits for Anna. C CBT may improve Anna's psychosocial outcomes, such as her quality of life, and help her to manage and cope with her symptoms. How it works. CBT is used to treat these symptoms by teaching skills to identify and reappraise negative thoughts impacting on emotions and behaviours. CBT can be used by Anna to support the adoption of more beneficial problem-focused coping styles. I think I do remember my doctor saying something about it. Um, I don't really know much about it, but it would be worth a try if it would get me back to what I was before. Well, that sounds like a great plan to me. How do you feel about it? I'm excited. Yeah, I'm glad. Thank you. Brilliant. I Maybe I could see you in two days if that would suit you. Okay, perfect. Um, we could go through some exercise and in the meantime I will refer you t to a psychologist for some CBT. Perfect. Thank you very much. Okay, I'll see you then. Thank you, Anna. Anna's goals include improve strength of lower limbs, improve balance, increase walking ability, reduce falls and fear of falling, reduce fatigue to a manageable level and return to hobbies such as golf. Take a look at the learning objectives and see how many boxes you can tick after watching this video. Don't worry if you don't tick them all. Simply take a break and come back to rewatch the video.